Good afternoon. I just watched the uh, SpaceX uh, take off and uh, achieve orbit with the two American astronauts on on board, and it kind of reminded me of something that I think people can forget. I'm of an age where I have seen every rocket take off with every satellite and every astronaut that they filmed. I've, I've seen that. And I could still remember the feelings I had when those big birds would fly up into the air. I was driving uh, in my truck in the summer, going to work in the steel mill, listening to the radio as the eagle touched down on the moon. Remember those specifically. In relation to what we're going through and the things that we have ahead of us, though, I'd like to say a few things. And one is that a lot of times with China, we get thrown out here. This economic juggernaut is going to overtake the United States, you know, and your days are numbered and whatever. And, and I got a lot of that with, from the Chinese trolls and whatever on there. But uh, I'm, I'm reminded that that's not the way it is. Of all of those things that China makes, which ones of those were created and discovered in China? You know, TV sets, start down through the list. Lasers, cars, planes, microwave, iPads, phones, TVs, digital TV. You know, the list of the contributions that the United States and the West, and you know, I, I don't want to get off on being a big pro-American. I'm more pro-world because America is the world. We're all immigrants here. And, and people come here for one reason, and that is freedom and uh, freedom of creative thought and freedom to live their lives. And you can't take a country like China or any totalitarian regime that suppresses that creative thought in people and then comes out with an edict of, well, we want you to be creative now. It doesn't happen that way, and it can't happen that way. China's got where China is because the world need a big, needed a big manufacturer, and China was it, and they did a good job with that. But they manufacture. They take IP and steal patents and everything else to, you know, promote themselves along, but all of those things that are there, they don't come from that mindset. They come from the mindset here of people striving to be free, wanting to let their creative thoughts go, and having an environment that allows that. Now, we went into globalization, and well, wasn't that, didn't that make sense? You know, if you're the best in the world for doing this, well, then you should do it and create it for the world. It'll be much more economic, and everybody will benefit from it. And we've been doing that for 30 years, and the United States has been sleeping for 30 years and letting that go on. And, you know, those, those don't turn out to be juggernauts. I'll tell you what a juggernaut is. A juggernaut is Elon Musk. A juggernaut is somebody who wants to build an electric car and they go out and do it. And then they decide to get into space and they do it. And they decide to build these uh, battery factories, gigafactories, and they do it. And that is the ace in the, in the hole, that is the grand advantage that the United States has. As I've said before, television was invented. Japanese uh, got very good at updating that and making it into a better and better and more definition, more definition, and every U.S. company was pretty well driven out of the market. And then those two guys down in Texas in their basement discovered digital TV. And bang, that analog and all of that infrastructure based on that, obsolete. So that is what we have now. And with our technology, those experiences and those benefits are going faster and faster and faster. And just what, you know, how long has we had SpaceX with Elon Musk? You know, like four or five years? Going from the ground to space in four or five years, a private individual. Jeff Bezos, the same individuals going. 
globalization said, well, United States, you should let Russia uh, launch all your uh, astronauts into space because they could do it economically. Well, yeah, maybe so. But what we saw today, launching our astronauts from our soil and the billions of dollars that went into that, that didn't go to Russia. That billions of dollars went into our economy. And that's what's going to happen with all of this. Those billions of dollars in that uh, pipe dream of globalization being the best way to go is going to disappear. And when people start making all of their own stuff, and if China's big gig is that they could make stuff, they're going to have a problem with that. You know, uh, Bill Gates worked in his uh, garage, uh, built Microsoft. Uh, Steve Jobs worked in his garage, built to build a Apple computer and iPhones and whatever, you know, and China's response to that is, we got to build more garages for our people, you know, and it's not it. That's not the way that it works. And I have a great feeling of confidence and renewal thinking about how this, this uh, launch has reminded me of why we are where we are. And uh, we are going to uh, proceed in advance. We are going to rebuild this economy, and it's going to be better, and it's going to be more uh, centrally located, and uh, the desire is going to be to help the American people and whatever. And that is what's going to come from this. We are going to go through hell before that. We're, we've got to. But the silver lining in the COVID cloud is reestablishing who we are, what's important, and our place on this planet, and that it's not globalization. So that thought came to me. Um, I thought I would share it because it has given me a renewed hope for all of this gloom and doom that's said about the USA and the economy and being overtaken by this. That is a bunch of trash. doesn't exist. So there, think about that, look up in the sky, see if you could pick up that spaceship up there. Thanks.